Three members of the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS have announced that they are leaving the regional bloc. The French news agency AFP reports that Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger accused ECOWAS of moving away from the ideals of its founding fathers and pan-Africanism. They also blamed ECOWAS for failing to assist them in the fight against terrorism. In a brief statement released on Sunday, ECOWAS said it had yet to receive any direct formal notification from the three countries about their intention to leave the community. The statement said ECOWAS remains seized with the development and shall make further pronouncements as the situation evolves. Political analyst Ibrahim Khan tells me he is not surprised by the three countries' decision. I'm not really surprised because uh, there was a lot of conversation between these three countries about their relationship with ECOWAS. You remember these three countries even created an organization to defend themselves. Uh, They created the network to try to find other ways of uh, trading with the rest of the world. This decision is not really a surprise. It's uh, in the continuity of what they were doing. Let's take a look at some of the reasons that these three countries are leaving ECOWAS, or they say they are leaving ECOWAS. They say ECOWAS has moved away from the ideals of its founding and pan-Africanism and is under the influence of foreign powers. But one of the principles of ECOWAS is the undemocratic change of government. ECOWAS is against that. And these three countries are all military governments. Well, it's quite surprising that you're saying these uh, three governments are run by militaries, because ECOWAS itself is a creation of uh, militaries. We should not forget that the two presidents who uh, initiated the creation of ECOWAS are former President Yakubu Gowon, who came to power by a coup, and former President uh, Etienne Eyadema, who became Nyasingbe Eyadema later on, who came to power in Togo by coup. I don't think that is really the purpose of the the issue. To me, what this issue is raising is that uh, ECOWAS is using tools that are not adapted to the reality of the region. There are criticisms that these countries have made that are really true. They are facing very serious security issues. They have not seen ECOWAS really helping them in uh, the fight against uh, insurgencies. ECOWAS was absent. It's the G5 that was really trying to do something. Do you think uh, ECOWAS made a mistake by not carrying out its uh, threat of military action, particularly against the junta in Niger? You know, the coup in Niger happened just after Tinubu came to power. I think for somebody who is new in the system, somebody who really wants to be, be as the chair of the institution, who really wants to know, even before starting sanctioning the country, you need to send a team to try to have an explanation of what happened between the general who took over the power and the former president of Niger. And from that conversation, you make your mind on the best way to deal with that situation. Maybe it was not necessary to come with all these sanctions. There was a possibility of finding a solution to the problem. But when you start by putting the bar at the very, very highest level, now it becomes difficult to have a conversation with some of those countries. These countries were supposed to be going to elections. So what do you think is going to happen to these elections? Well, I think one of the reasons they decided to leave the community is precisely because the community will come and tell them, when are you going to organize uh, your election, when the transition will end. This is the end of the conversation about transition. And this military government will continue to do, they believe that they will continue to do what they want. But I think it's important to say that when you read the the revised treaty of 1993, Article 91 of the treaty said that even when you decide to leave the institution, that decision will be effective one year later. And during that year, the country will continue to implement its obligation. And during that year, the country has also the possibility to come back again and say, I'm no longer leaving. So I think they are using this decision now to bargain with uh, the ECOWAS institution, to bargain uh, many, many issues that are on the table at the moment. And I think they are trying to do it together.
Ibrahim Makan, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibrahim. Haiti's government said Sunday it remains hopeful for a swift and positive outcome after a Kenyan court ruled against Nairobi's plan to deploy police officers to support the troubled island nation security forces. The ruling on Friday has thrown into doubt the future of a UN-backed multinational force long sought by Haiti's government, which has pleaded for internal help to confront its spiraling security crisis. Kenya's government had previously said it was ready to provide up to 1,000 personnel, an offer welcomed by the United States and other nations that had ruled out putting their own forces on the ground. The government of Haiti said in a statement Sunday that it was following developments in Kenya and expects a swift and positive outcome. It added that it would like to thank the many countries that have come forward to offer various types of aid to restore order and security as soon as possible. The Kenyan government has vowed to challenge the High Court ruling. Kenyan President William Ruto has described his country's undertaking as a mission for humanity, in step with its long record of contributing to peacekeeping missions abroad. The Western Hemisphere's poorest nation, Haiti, has been in turmoil for years, with armed gangs taking over parts of the country and unleashing brutal violence, leaving the economy and public health system in tatters. The 2021 assassination of President Jovenar Moise plunged the country further into chores. No elections have, been, have taken place since 2016 and the presidency remains vacant. The multinational mission, initially approved for one year, had envisioned Kenyan police on the offensive with their Haitian counterparts who are outnumbered and outgunned by gang members. The UN Security Council approved the mission in early October. In a statement, Haiti urged its citizens to remain calm to support our security forces and not to allow themselves to be intimidated by disinformation campaigns and threats of violence. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.